What's up people, it's Dev Sage here and in this video, I'm gonna be giving you three tips for landing that web developer interview. So tip number one when it comes to landing that web developer interview is to become a specialist. Companies have specific needs. Uh, their product is built on a specific tech stack, whether that be Burn stack, Mean stack, uh, Mevin stack or Venom stack, whatever you want to call it, or whatever. They have a specific tech stack that their product is built on. And they're going to be looking for people that have experience in that tech stack. And I think a common misconception among developers is that if you want to land a job or if you want to increase your chances of getting that interview is that you have to learn a million different technologies in order to kind of prove yourself. I don't think that's correct. I think that if you do that, you'd be making yourself a jack of all trades, but a master of none. For example, if, if you are a JavaScript developer and you said, I want to get a job as a JavaScript developer, so I'm going to learn Svelte, Dino, Angular, React, Vue, whatever, whatever other kind of framework out there. I'm going to learn all of them, right? I don't think that's the correct way to go about it. I, I think you should be really good at one of them, maybe even two of them if you want to explore a little bit, but get really good at one of them and then apply for companies that's looking for that particular framework. It's like if you were applying to a company that was a React company, they use React heavily in their product, and you being a jack of all trades, you have about three to six months of experience, maybe a year of experience with React, not too familiar with it as when it comes to building larger scale applications. Uh, but you also know Angular, Vue, Svelte, Dino, you know, you know all these other different frameworks. So you're just like, well, they should hire me, right? I've proven myself in all these different areas, right? Uh, I don't know. Let's say another guy, let's say, let's say Billy over there he also applies for this job that you're applying to. But Billy, he only knows React. And he's been doing it for, let's say, five years. Like, he's been building larger scale React applications. He knows about server side React using Next.js. He knows about styling his components with emotion. He knows about testing his components with, with uh, what is it, uh, React testing library. He has a large, domain of knowledge when it comes to react and that domain of knowledge will allow him to transition into the company and to become an asset to the company a lot faster than you would with your limited knowledge even though you know all a little bit of these other things so yeah the, the fact that you know all these other different technologies but not so well it's it's inconsequential to the company the the hiring manager is not necessarily going to care about the fact that you know all these other different things if it's not gonna make the company money at the end of the day, right? Is your knowing Angular and Vue and Svelte and Dino and all these other things, is that gonna bring money to the company over somebody that's, that's you know been doing React for five, seven years? Probably not. They're gonna pick this guy over you. So again, my advice is to pick a specific tech stack, whether that be Mean, Mern, Mevin, champ stack i don't know maybe you might be a wordpress guy whatever it is pick one or two and get really good at it and and then start applying for jobs like that become a specialist in what you do and with learning these things you need to be able to build real projects uh with whatever stack you choose you know forget the to-do lists forget the 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 uh the note taking applications forget the take that toe forget all those you need to build real projects that solve real problems right and I'll be going over this kind of in my in, in step two of of this uh, video but so one more thing that needs to be said I feel is that this advice of becoming a specialist is more so targeted for the smaller and mid-sized level companies uh, when you have your larger companies like your Google's or your Facebook's your Microsoft's I don't think they care as much that you're a specialist you know I think they they're, they're looking more so for generalists because I mean, there's so many products, like Google has so many different products and so many different teams that it, you, they could really just throw you anywhere, right? It, you really don't, they're not re really looking for React specific or Angular specific. If you can program, if you can prove to them that you can program and that you're competent and smart, they can put you wherever they need you, right? So that's just something to, to take note of. 
So tip number two, when it comes to landing that interview as a web developer is to build your portfolio. So you have to be able to demonstrate your skills as a developer, as an engineer to whoever's going to be making that hiring decision. But like I was saying just a little bit ago, you shouldn't build projects that are these basic, uh, you know, these tutorial type projects like these to do apps, like the note taking apps, tic tac toe, you, you stay away from those apps. You need to solve, you need to, you need to build apps that actually solve a real problem. Uh, for example, I'm going to be showing you a project that I built a couple years ago that I used to solve a real business solution at my old job. Um, and I, I was able to take this project and talk about this project at length in an interview that I had for a software engineering internship, which I passed and I got the internship and ultimately I'm, I'm still working for that same company today. So what we're looking at here is an application that I built back in college when I was working at the college library. I was a circulation desk assistant. So that means I, I sat at the, uh, the front desk and I helped people check books in, check books out, helped uh, you know, resolve issues with their account, et cetera, et cetera. So the library had a large assortment of books that people can come and check out, but there was a special section of books that we kept available only for students that we kept behind the front desk. And these were textbooks. So we had a, a collection of different textbooks for different classes that students could come and check out for two hours at a time, just in case they say forgot their textbook or maybe they, they hadn't purchased it yet or whatever. We, we had textbooks available. So that, that sounds convenient. But the, the problem we would run into is that we, we didn't have a million copies of each textbook available for everybody to check out. So what would happen is one student would come and check out a book for a class and then the next student number two would come by and ask for that same book and we might not have it. Let's say we, we didn't have that book available because student one already had it. And so what would happen is student number two would have to keep coming back every 10 minutes, every 20 minutes, every 30 minutes to keep asking, hey, did that book come back? Did that book come back? Did that book come back? And so I thought there must be a better way to kind of do this for there must be a way to, to notify students whenever the books that they're looking for come back and are checked back in. So I thought of available book. So this is the application that I thought of, which essentially what it does is um, you, you search for a, a, a a class what well, you put in your class here let's say we want to put in math 141 calculus you search for that class and it'll show you a list of all the textbooks for that class in this case we just have for example Thomas's calculus early transcendentals you see the status of not available so what this is, do is doing effectively is the, the school, the, the library, the school library has a catalog of books available on a separate site. And so what this application is doing is it's scraping the school catalog for this class's books and just pulling that information straight there. So as you can see, it's not available. And so what the student will be able to do is check this box, send me a text when this book is returned. They will put in their phone number, they would click submit and then what happens is their phone number gets saved in a database and book, this application would poll the school catalog site every so often to check to see if this status changed from not available to available whenever this status change whenever it recognizes that it says okay cool this book has been turned back in this would actually be available like this this would change from not available to available and then the student uh, it, it would send a text message to this student and whoever else put in their number for this particular textbook so that's that's pretty much the, the gist of this project so this project was something I was very proud of and I put it on my resume and it came up in discussion when I was interviewing uh, for my software engineering internship and it was something, a project that I was able to talk at length about the initial problem I was seeing. And I was able to talk through my, my thought process into how I 
design this the solution and i think businesses i think in, in my particular interview i think that was very helpful and it played a, a big part in me actually passing the interview and getting the position that the fact that i was able to demonstrate a real legitimate business need and and solve it and so i got the internship and ultimately that led into a full-time offer and i'm at the same company today so tip number three when it comes to landing that web developer interview is get referrals so referrals are a good way to kind of get your foot in the door of a company uh, referrals allow you to kind of bypass a stack of applications by getting somebody that already works at the company or is familiar with the company getting them to vouch for your skills and to put in a good word for you so i mean that sounds good right but how do i get a referral well what is a referral a referral is a person so if you want to get a referral you're going to have to build connections build genuine connections with real people that are in your industry well how do i do that well one of the ways you could do it is through linkedin right linkedin is kind of built for this kind of thing this networking and creating connections so one thing you can do is in linkedin you can type in um, technical recruiter Facebook or technical recruiter Microsoft technical recruiter Tesla and send connections to these technical recruiters like it's there it's literally their job to place people in these different positions whether really software engineer web developer whatever send them a connection request and I, I'd, I'd say that they're likely to, to connect with you sometimes you know they have so many other different connections but give it a try try to add as many technical recruiters as you can for whatever companies you want to apply for and watch out for openings like you can reach out to them and message them directly or sometimes oftentimes they they post different job openings periodically based off of whatever positions they want to fill so ultimately that what that does for you is now you have a whole linkedin feed of these different job openings that are available like tesla recruiter posts an opening for a software engineering position microsoft recruiter posts a front-end engineer position and you just have that that feed of available positions just right there in front of you and you have a person that you can go and talk to about it and see if they can point you in the right direction so another way you can kind of get referrals or or, or grow your connections is to uh, grow your social media presence like get a twitter profile or, or make grow your presence on youtube um, twitter is a very good way to kind of get close to whoever you want to follow right I think I think with LinkedIn, there's there's a certain gap that you know is is in between you and the person you want to connect to. It's very formal. It's very how do you do, sir? It's very professional. But with Twitter, I think it's very more. It's it's a lot more personal. It's a lot more informal. So if you were to follow somebody on Twitter, you know you follow a a, a engineer at, at at Google, engineer at Microsoft. You just follow them, retweet, interact with them, and and build that connection that way. And I, I feel that. You know, even if you know, you don't you don't want to do these things just for the benefit. It's like it seems kind of wrong to say, let me just follow these people just because I want a potential benefit. But ultimately, you're you're just expanding your network and increasing your your chances of being known and increasing your your presence online. Let people recognize you. And every now and then, somebody might on your Twitter feed, somebody might post a position that's, hey, we have a, a engineering position open. We have a web developer position open. Uh, you know retweet this to see you know whoever might be interested in applying and then you because you connected with them hey you're right there you say hey I follow you hey I seen this tweet let's let's connect let's talk about this position and yeah so overall it's just increasing your your, your connection space increasing your likeliness of, of, of running into a position through a person that already works at the company you want to work for I hope that makes sense but yeah, I think that's pretty much it. That's that's my three tips when it comes to uh, landing a web developer interview. Uh, if you like this video, hit the like button, hit the like button, hit the like button. Remember to subscribe for more content if you want to keep up with me. And yeah, peace.